Welcome to The Skin Report. Today, we are going to talk about how to reverse Ozempic phase or a lot of skin sagging after using drugs like Ozempic, Wegovy, semaglutide for weight loss. And if you enjoy learning about beauty, skin, skincare, please follow us, like, and also ask us any questions in comments. Welcome to the new Skin Report, a dedicated space for exploring the world of skincare, medical aesthetics, and beauty, especially for women of color. We're bringing the same insightful discussions into a vibrant new format where you can both hear and see the world of skincare and medical aesthetics come alive. So join us on the new Skin Report. Let's explore, learn, and grow together. Hit subscribe and let's make skincare and self-care a journey we embark on together. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey, Shahira. Hi. Is that thing has become like an adjective? It has. It's, it's, you know, it is. Oh, my God. I can't. I am so surprised at how many people are on it. And, you know, even my uh, my assumption of who should be on Ozempic has changed. But I, I will say that um, I actually think it is a fascinating drug and, and, a, and a fascinating thing that's happening in the weight loss space. But it has also been really fascinating to see its effects on the face. And we've done a video on a Zempic face before. We also have videos of showing when people, celebrities are on a Zempic, how their face has changed and how we see a consistent pattern among celebrities, which is a really fun video. So if you, if you get, those of you watching, if you get a chance, please look at that because it just visually demonstrates this further. Ozempic is controversial. I have opinions about that because I think that people should be able to do what they want with their bodies as long as they're doing it safely. You mentioned consistency in what happens with someone's face, uh, no matter what their ethnicity is, too, because we all kind of age differently. Mm -hmm. We show symptoms of aging differently. But what are the consistent facial or body skin changes you see mm -hmm. with, with somebody who is? And how long do you think they've been um, using? A, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question. Would you call it a drug? Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a drug of medicine. Yep, yeah. yep. Well, actually, Ozempic, I, I think, is actually very safe if used properly. And unfortunately, you know, being in the capitalist society that we live, um, there have been so many companies um, that have come out are offering it now online without monitoring. I mean, I've even seen doctors just giving somebody a vial of compounded semaglutide and saying, here, just, yeah, just inject this. These are the instructions by the amount of Ozempic. I mean, when you and I were sitting together the other day after I ate a huge slice of pizza, and just because I've been looking at and researching and just wanting to know what to ask you, I saw literally every other Instagram story was some type of semi-type compound, which I am so astonished by because I didn't think you would well, be there was um you weren't allowed to advertise that. I didn't think you were able to advertise that as a brand because it was a so sought after. I thought there was like medical guidelines, advertising guidelines. Um, is it is a very triggering thing for a lot of people to see that repeatedly. Is it super available now? The branded drugs, Ozempic, Wagoi, Manjaro, they still they can um, they can be um, they can go out of stock, and and they are first and foremost drugs for diabetes. So they should be first available to people with diabetes, not only for weight loss, which is why the compounded semaglutide terzipatide have come out which is great because it allows access to the mechanism of um, using these for weight loss. And a lot of uh, journalists have to, uh, you know, are covering this, which is perfect. But there's also, I think, sometimes um, a lot of like over sensationalized um, information about them, like it increases the rate of suicide, which it does not actually has lower rates of depression uh, for people who are on semaglutide and so forth. But the one thing we do know, there is such a thing as Ozempic face. And today we're going to talk about how to reverse it. But most importantly, what is it really briefly and how to prevent it? And then what can you do to reverse it now that you're there? Especially in your medical spas, the increase of people who have a very uh, accelerated fat loss. Uh, fat loss. Yes. So I've been in the medical aesthetic um, world for a long time. 
And I've seen a lot of people who've lost weight, 50, 60, 100 pounds. But what's interesting is this year, um, you know, we're in the middle of 2024. I'm for the first time seeing a different type of facial aging from fat loss. Why this is is um, is exactly going to help us understand how to prevent it and reverse. So when you are losing weight from uh, using more strength training, eating um, differently with more of a calorie deficit, you know, more gradually, yes, you're going to lose a little muscle mass. That's natural, but you are triggering and um, you're 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 having an uptick in growth hormone, which is helping you build more bones more muscle, skin. And so you are actually losing weight, but you're you're keeping those growth hormone levels up. You know, you're always repairing. And that is going to prevent this, you know, this kind of more gradual approach and weight lifting. The, you know, the exercise involved in losing weight will prevent um, that excess sagging. Now, what's happening in the semi-glutide space is that people are rapidly losing weight. And they are also rapidly losing a lot of muscle mass, up to 50% with semaglutide. And when this happens quickly, your body doesn't have time to adjust its levels of growth hormones because if you're not exercising, there's nothing triggering that. So that means that ozempic phase, so if we know that, we know that ozempic phase is actually avoidable and can be reversed um, also to, to a certain extent, depending on you know how advanced it is. And when I say avoidable, it's because you can avoid ozempic phase and that excess laxity by taking a more gradual monitored approach to weight loss with semaglutide. You know, work with a provider who is monitoring you on a frequent basis. When I say frequent, it could be anywhere from weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. And that they understand what you should be doing in addition to yes. taking you, this medicine. Exactly. You cannot just depend on a huge calorie deficit. What you do, you need to do a little more work here in addition to taking the, uh, the medication. When you do eat high protein, healthy sources of protein, lean protein, then exercise. And when I say exercise, actually not cardio really, really emphasize strength training. The muscle, muscle building, building. Strength building. Strength building. Because that is going to that is going to give us that trigger for growth hormone. That is going to prevent that laxity in the skin. It's actually going to help with keeping sustaining enough muscle mass so that when you go off the medication, you have a great metabolic rate. And you if you continue to eat healthy, which you should be able to in most cases, you will do well. You will continue to lose weight. And I have seen examples of that in my patients, which is excellent. But they were very invested in it in the proper way to do things. It is not, this is again, maybe I'm biased because I'm an internal medicine doctor, but this is it's epic. And you know, some glutide, it's 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 not some benign drug. If it was benign, it would be available over the counter. It's not like an allergy medicine, right? You need to be monitored. You need to there it's a it requires a lifestyle change and it needs to be Edu- you need to be educated. Exactly. And it doesn't just affect you. And it doesn't, it doesn't provide great benefits for you just internally. Um, and there is a superficial, there's an aesthetic factor to it. The provider should also be able to address that skin laxity is important because that person is probably also using this medicine to feel better generally. But then if you have the added side effect of, oh no, now my skin is right and my skin is sagging, what can I do to, to prevent that? Exactly, prevent what and kind of, reverse. What kind of skin care can they be using? When should they actually enter the medical aesthetic space for a little bit of like a boost or tightening? So just on average, most people should be trying to lose up to two pounds a week. If you're losing weight faster than that, it's too fast. But that means that when you've hit sort of the two to three month mark, you're going to start looking like you have facial uh, volume loss. And I, so I think in that case, around honestly, month number two of being on a semaglutide, come in, explore the options for skin tightening treatments like microneedling with radiofrequency all therapy. And, and I think that is going to start that whole process of rapid collagen induction. Now, what happens once you have a phase, you've lost a lot of deficit in your face, 
my sort of go-to treatments for that, and, and they've worked very well. We've been doing this now for, I would say, a little while because it, it's been used in the market. Semaglutide has been in the market for weight loss for now almost a year and a half. Sculptra. I, lo- I, I love the effects of Sculptra in the fact that it's natural. It replenishes volume and does it around your bone structure. And it causes a nice natural lift. And I like also using all therapy for this under chin area in the neck. That is a popular combination. I, and I really enjoy using that. Sometimes I will use some filler in the cheek area for some volume replenishment. If, 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 the, if the patient has, you know, some important event coming up, a reunion and all, you know, there are some things we can do and then do Sculptra later. That is also completely completely um, safe, great strategy, but do not, as you know, and we have episodes on this, use only filler to reverse ozempic phase. Right. That is not going to lift you. It will definitely not help you look yourself. Yeah, because the goal is sustainable and uh, prolonged uh, results. Yes. Um, the other thing uh, is, does ozempic or a um, similar medicine, um, does it affect your actual skin renewal or collagen? Yes and no. I don't think it actually affects your skin. I, I don't think it affects your um, skin renewal rate. I think it affects the quality of skin renewal. And, and you know, you're like, okay, well, what's, how is that different? Well, you're, you're, you are in a calorie deficit, right? So you may not be ingesting the right nutrients needed to, to feed your college, your renewal. So that means that in addition to good, you know, skincare treatments, also think about supplementation, vitamin B6, glutathione. I like liposomal supplementation. In our office, we actually offer IV bags of different types of, um, you know, antioxidant supplements, minerals that you are missing out on because, you know, the volume of food you're consuming has gone down. So that and also, again, if you're even absorbed, you, you have, um, which I love that you have, that you offer like a, is it an IV that helps detect how much you're actually absorbing. We do a test to mineral. see what you actually absorb okay. in, your, in your gut so that, or what you're deficient in so that we can customize your IV and, and give you that nutrition. Um, and these are all great ways to support um, that skin renewal because, you know, it's kind of like, it's like a, it's like a car that's uh, running on like really low quality gas and, and they're going to spoil their engine because of that versus using the higher grade, you know, gasoline. So I, I think like that's kind of how I think of it. There are ways to prevent ozempic phase and there are ways to reverse it. Sculptra, all therapy, microneedling with radio frequency, beautiful options. And, you know, um, I have great examples of that in upcoming videos. But uh, fillers, uh, carefully do not depend on them for the entirety of that reversal. Is there an age range that you prescribe a medical aesthetic treatment? So someone in their 20s or somebody in their, you know, w- w- does that, is that, a, what's the determining factor? You know, in normal weight loss, um, age range does matter. But in, in this case, honestly, I, you can have a 30 something year old who's had such rapid weight, lo- weight loss from Ozempic and so much facial sagging and deficit, a fat deficit that they are better candidates for surgery. Versus a fifty-year-old oh, who has taken it gradual and doesn't and can rely on non-surgical options. So in this case, I think age is not as much of a factor as much as the rate of weight loss. Which is again why I urge you, if you're going to use this, do it correctly, and it'll be an excellent, excellent result. Not done properly, that's when you run into issues. The this episode, these, this conversation, I think helped, and I hope it helps guide people know what to ask a medical provider. Um, it is a well, it's a, it's a, it's a full comprehensive, not just weight loss, body stabilization, health stabilization, but it's kind of an overall transfer. It is. It's an overall transformation. It really changes people's perspective and their energy levels to close. Like what can they do at home to maintain that skincare is huge. What can they do to maintain the really, really like huge investment in their new lifestyle? Medical aesthetics is not all about procedures. It's actually mostly about skincare, what you're doing on a daily basis, lifestyle. So retinol is a great retinol, great for retinol, great for skin cell turnover. And, and, you know, all of our videos and episodes on the optimal anti-aging 
routines and ingredients, this applies exactly. Um, and collagen making, it applies in this case as well. While retinol cannot lift sagging skin, it can certainly help you maintain, rebuild, replenish skin so it can be supple and firm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. Is there anything else you think we're missing? No, I think this is actually a really fun topic because it's 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 something a lot of people ask about and we're seeing a lot more of this ozempic face question. So knowing more about it is 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 important. And also um, we have so many more videos addressing this in different ways. And thank you for listening to us today. If you enjoy learning about aesthetic treatments, skincare, beauty trends, please subscribe, like, and ask us any questions in your comments. 